Civil rights activist Tamika Mallory was very outspoken in the days following George's death, calling for change, charging the cops. Uh, Tamika, thanks so much for joining us tonight. Um, we appreciate it. Tell us, we all heard the chilling speech you made. That was last year in 2020. So many were moved by your words. Again, arrest the cops, charge the cops, charge them in every city across America where our people are being murdered. Share with us that moment. What led to your specific anger in that moment, the frustration, the fight for justice? Well, first of all, thank you all so much for having me on. It is my inaugural uh, opportunity to come on to this network, and I'm very, very, very appreciative of the opportunity. Um, just listening to the speech and also having watched the trial today, it really kind of made me emotional, even though it's my words, just to hear uh, the rage that I know I was feeling in that moment. Um, I think for me personally, uh, what people may not know is that I actually arrived in Minneapolis that morning from Louisville, Kentucky, where a woman by the name of Breonna Taylor that we all now know had been killed by police in her home. Uh, and at that point, people did not even know who Breonna Taylor was. The world was not talking about Breonna Taylor in the ways in which we are today. Um, and so uh, coming from one very, very traumatic experience where I had been with Brianna's mother, Tamika Palmer, her sister, Janiah Palmer, her aunt, Bianca Austin, and so many other family members and local community members who were literally distraught and screaming out for someone to pay attention to their daughter who had been killed two and a half months before uh, the moment that we arrived there. That was very emotional for us. Um, and then to travel and actually in, 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 in between going to Minneapolis we traveled to another family, Mikhail Rose, um, in, in Indianapolis. So we had been on the road literally visiting families of people who had been murdered by police and then listening to, I did not watch the George Floyd um, video, but I heard uh, his voice. I heard him calling for his mother. So when I stood up to speak at the press conference that day, I didn't prepare my notes as I usually do. Um, I just spoke as the mother of a child who just turned 22 years old on this Friday. I spoke from my heart and and, uh, you know, obviously I was able to articulate what so many black people were feeling around the world, which is rage. Yeah, that rage. Uh, and, and many have dubbed your viral speech the speech of a generation, state of emergency. Um, it feels like the pain has become normalized for all of us. I know you have a new book coming out. Um, the title so relevant. I see it over your left shoulder, State of Emergency. Are we in a state of emergency when it comes to black lives and police brutality? We have been and we continue to be in this moment. And, you know, um, I appreciate the fact that so many have recognized the speech. But I would just like to say that, um, again, my words were very, 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 um, uh, you know, came from my heart. It, it was just something that I think has been a buildup where we have continued to go through and feel and experience this brutality and the brutality, not just of the actual cases and these court hearings and listening to what we saw happening in that courtroom today. I've sat through too many of these. I sat in the courtroom where uh, the judge who was responsible for giving Sean Bell's family justice sat there and talked about Sean Bell and the other members of uh, the, those who were with him who were shot. He spoke of them in the same way as if they were criminals. Uh, and it has happened over and over again where the system indicts the person who was harmed. Um, the person who was murdered. And so, it, for, but I will say this, we won't allow it to be normal. And we will have hope every single time that the system will give us justice. We will fight for it. We will speak to it. We will never sit down and allow the murder of black people uh, by the state to go unnoticed and for us to become comfortable with what we know is not okay. It is not acceptable. And as long as there's breath in my body, we will speak to and continue to fight for justice. Um, you know, we don't have much time left, but I have to ask you this, justice, justice is just a word. What does it look like in this case? What does it look like for black people? 
Mm-hmm. Well, in my book, State of Emergency, that you mentioned, thank you so much for acknowledging it. Um, the book talks about that. It gives us uh, the context from the history because it's important. You have to connect the dots. But it talks about the prescription for the future. And I think just in the immediate, to give a very short answer, justice looks like accountability in this case right now. It looks like ensuring that Derek Chauvin, he will have to pay just like you and I would if we took the life of someone the way in which we saw him take uh, uh, George Floyd's life. We want to see accountability. There's a lot more that can happen, but let's start with being accountable for our actions and not having a system that is one-sided for some and not accountable for law enforcement. Step one, activist, author. Tamika Mallory, we thank you. I thank you so much, and I hope you will uh, come back for many more appearances here on BNC. Thank you.